This is a demonstration of the Vesp Duet. And uh, you might recognize it from the previous Thorn Core, and the casing is almost the same. Some minor differences, like we have M4 screws here instead of M3. And we have um, a new injection molded part. And we made this one in collaboration with Lacra. So the Storm cores that they will be selling soon, the version 2, will be pretty much the same device with one difference, that being the cables. So since we noticed that this one can do a lot more power, we went up in wire gauge to 6 or 8 OVG instead of 12. And that reduces the resistance quite a bit. So looking at the PCB, we can see that um, instead of 6x5 MOSFETs, we now have uh, 12 tall MOSFETs, Infineon tall MOSFETs in this one. And uh, instead of the NRF, we have an ESP32. And we also have a memory chip on it, so 4GB of memory for logging on board on a device. And we have a new buck converter that is more reliable. And the UART port on the side, this one. Now goes to ESP, so if you plug in the GNSS receiver here, you can do logging on the map directly on the device. And the USB port here goes to ESP instead of the SDM, so that when you read out the logs, that is a bit faster. And uh, you have canvas between them as well. So over here I have uh, two C155 motors, and I have connected them to a duet that is uh, clamped to a bit of a block, aluminum block. And I will switch it on now. And you can see we have the same RGB button from before with a different, with a new Vesk Labs logo on it. And it is driven by my big power supply down here. And what I'm going to do now is to run FOC open loop on motor one, maybe motor two as well, we have time. I'm going to set it to 200 amps and we're going to see how long it can sustain that and how much it drops and uh, whether it blows up or not. It shouldn't blow up because I've been doing this many times. So you can see now it's connected to my Wi-Fi and I will connect to it. And then on the canvas, you can see that it shows up here. So I will pick the first motor, go to terminal and uh, activate heartbeat to keep open loop running. And now we do FOC open loop. So now we're pushing 200 amps and we can see the temperature climbing here. Oh, I forgot to start the timer, so I probably was five seconds late there. And you can see that the motor is um, rotating slowly. And the eight AVG cables are heating up already. They're getting quite hot already now. So let's see, after 30 seconds plus the 10, we are at 70 degrees and we're still pushing the full 200 amps in Moto 1. And it is symmetric, so I also did the same test in Moto 2. And you can see it just keeps going. And right now I think you see that we have a quite linear slope on this one. And I think that means that uh, this slope is uh, based on how fast we are heating up the big aluminum block. And now we can see that we hit one minute there now and we're still pushing 200 amps one minute later and the MOSFET temperature is at 82 degrees right now. So you can see that this device is uh, way more powerful than I expected. It is getting quite hot to the touch now and the cables are getting really hot. Let's go back over here. We are at 1 minute and 25 seconds and we are at 190 amps now. You see that the temperature is starting to level out there. So yeah, I didn't think you could push so much power. The main limitation on this one is going to be the input connector. But as you can see, the connector is soldered directly at the power stage here. And that means that the cooling we get on the MOSFETs with this big pad here will also cool the connector, so you can probably push it quite a bit more than they usually are rated when you're just hanging in air on a cable. And also in most cases you are mostly interested in acceleration at low speeds, I would assume, when you put this on something like a skateboard or a scooter. So, yeah, pretty impressive. Um, I can also show that, um, I think you can show it here, 
uh, no I don't have one here but this is a 0.5 millimeter heat pad and um, it has a surf uh, surface across the entire surface here against the aluminum block here and then it has uh, rubber pads that go on all of the MOSFETs and then there is four screws in the corner and one in the center that didn't used to be one in the center before so it really clamps those MOSFETs down onto the heat pads and that's why we get the heat out really well on this one now let's have a last look we're at 2 minutes and 50 seconds and we are at 180 amps about